I'm sorry, but the German TÜV, I am not your biggest fan. So this is the problem. Hello everyone. You might have noticed or heard that my channel is taking a slightly different new direction. Still plenty of Germany content, but I've been traveling a lot. So I thought it was time to introduce you to the newest member that I've got on board. No, it's the other way round. I'm on board of the newest member of my channel. This is, well, I asked you to guess. You came up with really fun ideas like Lorena uh, from Bianca I th and um, oh, all kinds of really fun ideas. But now's the big reveal. I called my van Floki after the Viking who discovered I Iceland, but actually after the character in the TV series, the Netflix series Vikings, because Floki is a bit crazy, but somehow really makes sense. And that's how I feel about this van that after many, many years of wanting to have a camper van, I finally managed to achieve. It's self-built, so I thought I'd give you, in this video, a little van tour, but I can't do it here. How about at the top of the famous Karolstigen Serpentine Road in Norway? This famous mountain road took eight years to build. King Hakon VII ordered its construction and opened it in 1936. Karolstigen means troll path and the road has 11 hairpin bends. There is one last remaining person who was involved in the construction, indeed had one of the most important jobs. Nicoline Möhren Gröning was born in 1916 and Nika cooked for the men who built the Trollstegen. The Nikaswingen Bend was named after her and she is the first woman to have the honour. The stones lining the road were pulled to the bottom in an avalanche, but the Norwegians searched for all of them at the bottom of the waterfall where they had landed and restored them to their original position from the 1930s. Hello and welcome to my really honest van tour in the rain in Norway where I'm going to have my second rant on the channel. It's a mild rant but it's a real rant because I converted my camper van in Germany where I live and I wanted of course to take it to the German MOT to have it re-registered as a camper and no longer a lorry. The German MOT is the TÜV the Technische Überwachungsverein, Technical Surveillance Club. It started, I believe, as a club many years ago, and now it's a really official thing throughout Germany and has become the MOT for the, that country. And my problem is the following. A group of people decided to make sure that they covered their backs by enforcing us all from 2023 to have security ventilation in the vans. Probably in case people would switch on their gas cooker to keep warm, drink a couple of beers and gas themselves. But I've built a fan into my van and a window near where I wanted to have my gas cooker so that I could have it open a little bit and have some air going through. I have to pay for this decision and I'll tell you how. I bought a window without forced ventilation before I knew about this rule because I didn't want it to leak on my bed. 
And because of the forced ventilation rule, now security ventilation, I had to take out the rubber seal that differentiates forced from not forced ventilation, where not forced means I decide when I want to open my window, which I would do when it's not raining. But now it's basically permanently always open a little bit because it's just not sealed and it leaks now. It leaks. I also had to drill a hole in the floor of my van a certain amount of centimetres. I think it was five centimetres because I've kind of got a little outdoor cooker, which is OK for indoors if you ventilate. But TÜV doesn't want to rely on that. So I had to build it onto a sh pull out shelf at the back of my van and stand outside in the wind and the rain and the cold and the snow to cook. Um, because Tuff is so worried that I won't open a window, even with the forced ventilation that they forced me to have. So I can't have the gas cooker inside the van. Um, yeah. I think that this is madness. You can cook in your van, but then you have to do the, the, the gas test thing where you get a, a little sticker and everything. And I just want a little gas, a small cooker with these little canisters, little like, like, like hairspray can size gas because I want it to be safe. And I thought I don't want a big can of gas in my van. So that's the reason I'm very, very upset and ranting about the German MOT, the TÜV. Ah, but apart from that leak and of course the cold, cold blowy air from the hole in the floor, I'm loving traveling in a van. Rain is not my friend because of the leaks and also because it's hard to dry stuff in a little van, two little dogs and their coats and two adults with their coats. But I've got my genius solution because I've got heated a heat blower in my bathroom and I put up a um, I put up a, a wire um, clothesline to hang stuff off. So it drips in there, serves as a mudroom in the van. Some other things I thought I might show you are my beloved coffee machine <laughs> you know me in coffee if you if you're not new on my channel and I secure that with my bungee it's been working perfectly we've got running water which is fantastic and we filter the water we filter it twice we filter it when we put it in um, and we filter the drinking water the warm water just comes through but the drinking water the cold water gets filtered again and it's from a Swabian firm in Germany called Alp Filter and I've got one at home as well we drink a lot of water of course as singers and um and I really love the Alp Filter I feel very secure with all the water because it's quite a heavy duty filter for the van, which filters out uh, bacteria and microbes and things like that. So that's excellent. And this is my kitchen, which is as tidy as it ever looks. Uh, but it's just great because I can see that everything is fine. That There are no insects or mice or anything that have snuck into the van amongst my stuff. I'm very happy with how I've secured the cupboard door, the fridge door and the, the cutlery drawer. This little stool helps me climb up onto the bed because I'm too short. And the bin is hooked under there, which is easy to get in and out. There's the little brush I use to clean up. And the bin, if it does get heavy, it just slides down and rests on the little stool while we're driving. Another thing I'm really pleased about is I made a cover for the fan because when when we're driving, especially if we're on a motorway, it's really loud and I'm really, I don't like noise. So I put Velcro strips around and I bought a cover 
for I don't know what it was for actually I'll try to find out if anybody wants to know and I put the velcro strips on and I can just stick it on there and it cuts the noise it's absolutely bearable um more than bearable it's totally fine when that's on there and also if it's kind of a windy day you do see the the fan movement and as you know I suffer from migraines and it can be a bit of a strobe effect so I can cover it then I'm pleased with that so I've got lots of ideas for improvement but I just wanted to get going and see what I found on my travels yeah and I found some nice things when I was traveling and by the way if you see these furry things they're all fake they're all artificial and it's really cozy and really lovely and I'm absolutely thrilled and very grateful that I've been able to build a van and travel in it and I hope this big Norway trip is the first of many 